Hello, good evening. How are you? Okay, now we're going to begin with the class. Thank you for being here, Maximo. And Jose Moises, thank you for being on time. Let's see here. Today we are going to begin with section five. So I'm going to open right now the, the platform just to check the information there. Okay, just let me check here. Yes, I guess there are problems with the platform again. But no problem, we are going to develop the topics for today. Okay, these are a section five, what would you do? Okay, the last section for uh, this module. Finally, we have a finish with the classes. So we are going to we are going to uh, finish next week. Tomorrow, no classes, right? No hay clases mañana. Así que eh, tienen vacación viernes, sábado, domingo. Y terminamos lunes y martes con el módulo. So today we are going to finish with section five. It says, in this class, you will listen to a conversation where unreal conditional sentence with if clauses are used in context. So um, today we are going to know how to use the conditional and also uh, sentences that are not real, right? Like situations that can be like a sub supposition, right? For example, it says here, the morning news, stories of honesty. Businessman returns $750,000 to owner and is thanked with a brief phone call. Golfer admits using illegal ball by mistake, but is still disqualified from game. Athlete admits to cheating, confesses that he just wanted to win. Students use detective work to find owner of gold jewelry. Taxi drivers return, uh, returns computer drives miles to give laptop back to passenger. Fan returns soccer stars lucky t-shirt player gives him $1,000 in reward. So we have here like different stories, like uh, honest stories, right? And uh, some of them are unbelievable, right? So that's what we are going to check right now. We have this conversation here. Let me see if it is the same. And we are going to have, uh, we are going to study the conditionals today. And these are some words, words that we can, that we are going to use, right? For example, firm. Firme, dilemma. This is the pronunciation. Dilemma. Forgive. Confront. Apology. Confront. Apology, que es disculpa. Apology. Honest. In this case, the H doesn't sound right. It's not like her. Honest. Honest. We have advice. Advice. Advice is consejo. Can you give me an advice, please? Puede darme, uh, uh, not an advice, you know, a piece of advice. 
Can you give me a piece of advice? Yes, no, right? Problem. Problem. Situation. Situation. Should. Should. Refuse. Refuse. And uh, we have refuse, negar, or rechazar, right? We have lend. We have enjoy. Enjoy. Disagree. Disagree. Disagree means no estar de acuerdo, right? That is. And the opposite of disagree is agree, right? Agree. We have admit. Admit. Also, we have deny. Deny. Admit and deny are opposite, right? Admitir o negar algo. Divorce. Divorce. Forget. Uh, marry. Marry. Save. Save. Save is salvar, right? Salvar. But also with money, when it is related to money, is um, ahorrar, save money, right? Save money. Remember, remember, recordar. Lose, perder. Lose. Dislike. 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 We have dislike, aversión o desagradar. Okay, borrow. Borrow es pedir prestado, ¿verdad? Borrow. Eh, accept. Accept. Aceptar. Predicament. I have a predicament. Tengo un problema, de verdad. Eh, predicament. That will be the, o un apuro, right? Predicament. Tough. To be tough is ser duro, or this, this is a tough task. Esta es una tarea difícil, ¿verdad? Tough. O también fuerte puede ser. It's, it's, so, it's like tough. A person who is tough is like rudo, ¿verdad? Es como fuerte. We have go. Go. We have buy. Buy. Also return. Que es regresar o volver. Spend. Spend. Fine. If. If. If es sí, ¿verdad? Sí, pero de sí hubiera sido así o si hubiera sido de esta manera, no de afirmación. And honesty. Honesty. Okay, these are some words that we are going to use in this uh, section, in this module, in the, in the last section. Do you have any question, any doubt about the meaning? Preguntas? Okay, perfect. So we are going to continue. Uh, okay, we have Maximo, Rina, Jose Moises, Wendy, and Sonia. And I thought that I saw Rosemary, but Ro Rosemary is not here anymore. So today we are going to have uh, like some conversation talking about um, unreal situations, okay? Unreal situations. So we are going to read it first. And if you have any questions, you just let me know, okay? I will make it a little bit bigger. So you will be able to read it. Okay. I will read it. After that, we are going to listen to it. It says, Phil, look at this. Some guy found $750,000. He returned it. And the owner simply thanked him with a phone call. You're kidding. If I found $750,000, I wouldn't return it so fast. Why? Why? What would you do? Well, I'd go out and start spending it. I could buy lots of nice clothes and jewelry. Someone might also find out about it. And then you could go to jail. Mm, you got a point there. So that is a conversation about an unreal situation, right? The question that Phil asks Pat is, what would you do? ¿Qué harías? ¿Qué harías, verdad? In that situation, what would you do, right? And then she starts explaining, right? Do you have any question about this conversation? ¿Preguntas de la conversación?
No questions. Okay, so we are going to listen to it. Vamos a escucharla. We are going to listen and then we are going to practice it. Let me make it a little bit smaller here. And I will play here the conversation. Let me know if you are able to listen to it. Vamos a ver si la podemos escuchar. If done, let me know, right? If you don't. Let me see. Hey, hello, everybody. Let's see here. Okay, it's here. Seven hundred fifty thousand. Okay, let's listen the dialogue. Page one hundred, exercise two, conversation. If I found seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, part A. Listen and practice. Look at this. Some guy found seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. He returned it, and the owner simply thanked him with a phone call. You're kidding. If I found $750,000, I wouldn't return it so fast. Why? What would you do? Well, I'd go out and start spending it. I could buy lots of nice clothes and jewelry. Someone might also find out about it, and then you could go to jail. Hmm, you've got a point there. Okay, so... Your microphone is mute. I think. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, we uh, listen to the conversation, right? So what we are going to do right now is just to practice a conversation. Uh, two volunteers. I need two volunteers to practice this conversation. Me? I don't know if be, I can hear you. Okay, who will practice oh. the conversation with just me? We have Maximo, Rina, Jose, Moises. We have Wendy. We have Sonia and we have Rosemary. Sonia, okay. So uh, just me, you will be Phil and Sonia, you will be Pat. Okay, go ahead, please. I is that right? <laughs> yes, correct. Okay. Look at this. Some guys found $750,000. He returned it. He returned it. And he, and the owner simply thank you. He would phone call. You caring? I have found $750,000. I go, I, I'm sorry, I won't return it so fast. Why? What will you do? Well, I go I go out and start spending it. Mm -hmm. I could be lost of night clothes and jewelry. Someone might also find out about it and then you could go to jail. Mm, you you're got a pointer very good you've got a pointer what is the meaning of you got a pointer sonia um, i don't i don't know okay if you get a pointer it means um como tener un punto verdad como tener un punto a favor en una discusión verdad you got a pointer very good Let's see, uh, Josemith, what would you do if you found $750,000? What would you do if you found that amount of money? 
I think I return it too. You will because return it? When you keep it something that you don't, is not yours, mm -hmm. I think you lost, after that you lost more money or you lost another important things. Okay. That, like karma, I don't know in English, karma is. Yeah, karma is same. karma, <laughs> yes, the same. Very good, very good point of view. Like probably somebody is going to need this money, right? And you're going to use it and yeah, probably it's not going to, to be a, a good idea. Very good. Yeah, honesty is good uh, sometimes. Very good, perfect. Let's see the rest, right? In this case, in this uh, conversation, we are talking about a situation that is like um, unreal, right? No es real, una situación irreal, una situación que imaginamos. Estamos suponiendo algo, ¿verdad? What would you do? Esa es la pregunta. ¿Qué harías tú? ¿Qué harías tú? What would you do? Okay, how will how do we respond to that, right? What is the answer for that? I would, right? I will do this, I will do that, I will go out with my friends, I will buy a lot of things, I will travel to different countries, okay? That is um, something that is not real. Es una imagina, es una suposición. So that's how we answer to that. Uh, we have another objective. It says, by the end of this class, participants will learn and understand the use of unreal conditions and sentences with if clauses. Um, I don't know if you remember in previous in previous modules, en módulos anteriores, no sé si les enseñaron a ustedes las condicionales. Otro tipo de, porque vamos a, 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 a explicar en esta parte nada más un tipo de condicionales. But you already know the other conditionals, right? The first conditional, for example, or the zero conditional. You already know that, right? Eso ya se la saben. No. No? No. Maybe, but, in... but I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Okay, very good. We are going to remember them. Okay, but in, in previous modules, probably they talked about this. And los anteriores debieron de haber visto esto. Okay, so vamos a hacer un pequeño repaso. We're going to review them. Okay, this is the one that we are going to study. Esta es la que vamos a estudiar en esta sección. On real conditional sentences with if clauses. Imaginary situation. Simple pass. If I found... $750,000, I will spend it. So we have the imaginary situation, if I found, que va a ser en pasado, la situación, y la consecuencia, la posible consecuencia. And with the possible, the possible consequence, we can use would, could, or might. Plus the verb. Remember that would, could, or might, they, they are models, right? Ellos son models. Y después del modal va el verbo en infinitivo, ¿verdad? Sin el to. So, I will spend it. I wouldn't return it so fast. I could buy lots of nice clothes and jewelry. I might go to the police. So, el, el will, ¿cómo transforma al, al verbo? ¿Cómo se traduce? Por ejemplo, will spend. ¿Cómo se traduce en español? ¿Podría? Lo gastaría. Lo gastaría. Oh. Ajá, lo gastaría. Entonces, todos los que llevan el will antes de, del verbo, por ejemplo, el verbo spend significa gastar, y el will lo convierte en ia, ¿verdad? Will spend, yo gastaría. I wouldn't return, que es el negativo, no lo devolvería, ¿verdad? Entonces, todos los que llevan will lo tra transforma a ia. I will eat, yo comería. I will travel, yo viajaría. What, eh, entonces, lo usamos para posibles consecuencias. Probably that is not going to happen. No va a pasar, probablemente, pero por eso usamos el would. Ahora, con el could, I could buy lots of nice clothes and jewelry. I could, what is the translation of I could buy? ¿Cómo traducimos I could buy? Compraría. Compraría. O, en este caso, como no tiene el would, tiene could, ¿verdad? Tiene otro, no es would, sino que could. Entonces es, yo podría, ¿Podría? exactly, yo podría comprar. Yo podría comprar, yo podría hacer esto, podría hacer lo otro. Entonces siempre que lleve could o might, eh, vamos a, a traducirlo como podría. 
podría pasar esto, podría hacer esto, ¿verdad? Entonces, esta es la diferencia entre el would, spend, will return, esos transforman el verbo en ia, y el could y el might es podría. Por ejemplo, con might sería I might go to the police, podría ir a la policía, podría. Entonces, could and might are synonyms, could and might. And we have more examples here. For example, if I had money, what can I do if I had money? If I had a lot of money, I will buy a house, right? I will buy a house. If I were sick, si estuviera enfermo, if I were, right? If I were sick, uh, here is missing the subject. Podemos ponerlo con you también. If you were sick, you wouldn't be in class. No estarías en clase, ¿verdad? You wouldn't be in class. If I had time, si tuviera tiempo. Si tuviera tiempo, I could uh, go to sleep early. Podría ir a dormir temprano, ¿verdad? I could go to sleep early. If I had time, si tuviera tiempo. You see? So, las uh, cláusulas con if siempre tienen el verbo en pasado, ¿verdad? El pasado de have es had, ¿verdad? El pasado del verbo to be es where, ¿verdad? Patricia, buenas noches, aún estoy en el tráfico, solo escucharé. Ok, Patricia, no problem. Right now we are checking just the grammar. Ahorita solo estamos uh, explicando la gramática y después ya probablemente el lunes ¿verdad? ya la vamos a poner en práctica, ¿verdad? In this one, let me see this link. I don't remember what this link is for. Okay. Let me see here. Now this is extra information with wood. Ok, we are going to continue. Vamos a hacer un repaso con el zero conditional, ok? Entonces tenemos tres condicionales. El zero conditional, first conditional, second conditional, ¿verdad? Y el third conditional. Pero vamos a, solo hoy vamos a estudiar el second conditional, el de las eh, eh, situaciones irreales, donde vamos a suponer. Pero existen otros dos. Los que ya tendrían que saber es el zero conditional. Es un con if siempre, una if clause y otra eh, oración, oración independiente. Por ejemplo, present simple. If you leave ice in the sun, present simple, it melts. En esta, en el zero condicional o zero conditional, eh, este se ocupa para hechos, ¿verdad? Que son reales, que son científicos, que es una situación que si algo pasa, eh, damos por hecho que lo otro va a pasar, o sea, así va a ser, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, if you leave ice in the sun, si usted deja hielo en el sol, ¿qué pasa? Se derrite, ¿verdad? It melts. So, obviously that will happen, right? Eso va a pasar, no hay, podría pasar, no podría pasar, eso sí va a pasar. Entonces, para eso se ocupa la zero conditional. It says, it refers to a general situation that always happens if a condition is met. Es una situación general que siempre pasa si la condición es cumplida. The condition always has the same result. Esta condición siempre tiene el mismo resultado. Y las zero conditionals are also known as type zero conditionals. Los tipo cero, ¿verdad? Condicionales tipo cero. Entonces, eso es para cosas que son reales y que no van a cambiar. Por ejemplo, si, si usted eh, se echa agua, se moja, ¿verdad? And that would be a zero conditional. If you get wet or if you uh, uh, put it inside, you, you pour water to yourself or on yourself, you are going to get wet or you get wet, right? So that is the zero conditional, right? If... Siempre, siempre el if, ¿verdad? Si, condition, you leave ice in the sun, comma, it melts. So, eso es un hecho. Es una verdad general, ¿verdad? We have more uh, examples here. Rina, can you read the examples, please? Okay. 
if you leave ice in the sun, it melts. Mm -hmm. If you stand in the rain, you get wet. Mm -hmm. If you keep milk in the fridge, it lasts longer. Mm -hmm. If you put water in the freezer, it becomes ice. If I drink coffee at night, it takes me a long time to fall asleep. Very good. So, esos son hechos, ¿verdad? Como pueden ver, aquí usamos solo dos tiempos. We use two tenses. Present simple and present simple, right? If you put water in the freezer, it becomes ice. So, this is uh, present and the other one is present. That is the zero conditional. Zero conditional. And, and we can switch, right? Este, este también lo podemos cambiar. Todos los y las if clauses las podemos poner después si queremos. Um, for, for example, if you stand in the rain, you get wet, right? It says here, let me see here, comma is necessary, but if I change it, I can write this at the beginning. Puedo escribir esto al principio. You get wet if you stand in the rain. Te mojas si te pones debajo de la lluvia, ¿verdad? If you get wet, if uh, you get wet if you stand in the rain. So aquí no hay ninguna coma. Si el if se pone después, ya no va la coma, ¿verdad? Eso es lo que quiere decir esta regla. Y esta coma, if I drink coffee at night, it takes me a long time to fall asleep. And in the other one, there is no coma. It takes me a long time to fall asleep if I drink coffee at night. Oh, and it says here, we can often use when instead of if, and it has the same meaning. Dice que en lugar de if, también podemos utilizar when. Y tiene el mismo resultado, ¿verdad? If you keep milk in the fridge, it lasts longer. Or, when you keep milk in the fridge, it lasts longer. Lo mismo, solo le cambiamos el if por el when. If you leave ice in the sun, it melts. When you leave ice in the sun, it melts. You see, it, es lo mismo. Si, es como decir, cuando dejas hielo en el sol, se derrite. ¿Verdad? It's, it's the same. It's si o cuando. And the first conditional, esta creo que ya la debieron eh, eh, estudiar el, la vez pasada. Esta es la first conditional. Esta no la vamos a estudiar, solo es un repaso, ¿verdad? La first conditional es, if we work hard, we will finish the project on time. Esta first conditional es usado para expresar una situación muy probable que va a pasar en el futuro, algo que probablemente va a pasar. Estamos casi seguros que va a pasar posiblemente, ¿verdad? Lo ocupamos para diferentes situaciones, pero más que todo para eso. Dice, it refers to things that will possibly happen in the future if a condition is met. We are predicting a likely result in the future. First conditionals are also known as type one conditionals. Entonces, esta es la primera condicional. Y este se refiere que si se cumple eso, estamos pre prediciendo que algo va a pasar. Por ejemplo, si trabajamos duro, terminaremos el proyecto a tiempo. If we work hard, we will finish the project on time. ¿Cuál es la diferencia de esta? Que aquí sí estamos prediciendo el futuro, ¿verdad? Que si hacemos esto, esto va a pasar. Y en este caso, usamos el presente simple. Y el futuro simple. Aquí usamos una, el if lleva el presente y el resultado lleva el futuro, no como la anterior que llevaba presente, presente, ¿verdad? That is the difference, right? Um, so here, here I am, uh, he, this is the condition and this is the result. And here I am saying it is possible that we will finish the project on time and the condition of working hard now. I am predicting that this is the likely result in the future. So, aquí hay más ejemplos. Let's see. Um, Wendy, Abigail, can you read the sentences, please? ¿Puede leer los ejemplos? Hey, if we work hard, we will finish the project on time. Mm -hmm. If you like to see singer, then you love her new album. Mm -hmm. If you take this medicine, you will feel much better. Mm -hmm. What are my case? If you look in the garage, you will find them. Very good. Perfect. So, as you can see, the condition, right? The condition is in present. 
present, 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 present. The result is future, simple future, right? We will, then you'll, you will, you will. You see, everything is future. Uh, for example, si te tomas la medicina, te vas a sentir mejor. Eso quiere decir, uh, no estoy seguro si se va a sentir mejor, ¿verdad? Pero probablemente eso va a pasar. Alguien enfermo que se tome la medicina se va a sentir mucho mejor. So, eso es lo que, para eso ocupamos la condicional. Y aquí tenemos más ejemplos, ¿verdad? Um, Gabriela, can you read these examples, please? Yes, sure. Okay. Uh, if, I, if I see John, I won't tell him about the surprise. Mm -hmm. If I don't feel well tomorrow, I won't go to work. Mm -hmm. If it is sunny tomorrow, we will have a picnic at the park. If he doesn't arrive soon, we will live without him. Very good. Uh, so in this case, as you can see, we can combine, right? Uh, aquí podemos, estamos combinando eh, las eh, oraciones negativas o el, el, la condición puede ser negativa y el resultado también puede ser negativo o puede ser el viceversa, ¿verdad? No, no, no porque el if va a ser negativo, el otro va a ser negativo, sino que también puede ser positivo la consecuencia o negativa. Por ejemplo, if I see John, I won't tell him about the surprise. Si yo veo a John, no le voy a decir de la sorpresa, ¿verdad? Entonces ahí está en negativo. En la segunda podemos ver que eh, está negativo aquí y negativo aquí. Entonces podemos también eh, cambiar eh, en afirmativos y negativos, ¿verdad? No necesariamente si una es negativa, la otra también. Eso es lo que explica aquí. Y aquí eh, es algo que a veces muchas personas uh, tienen, ¿verdad? Uh, a lot of people make this mistake. They say, if it will rain. If it will rain tomorrow, si lloverá mañana, no. The, the if clause is in, in present, right? The condition. If it rains tomorrow, si llueve mañana. If it rains tomorrow, we will stay home. Nos quedaremos en casa. You see? So the result will be always be in future. If it rains tomorrow, we will stay home. Or we will stay home if it rains tomorrow. Y lo mismo, si podemos poner el if, la condición al final, ¿verdad? Solo que le quitamos la coma. Si el if va al final, le quitamos la coma. Siempre pasa eso con la first conditional y la zero conditional. Y aquí tenemos más ejemplos, ¿verdad? Con, con cambiar la, la, la condición con el resultado la, de posición, ¿verdad? And that is the first conditional. The first conditional, we can use it for possible plans. Promises, warnings, threats, or persuading someone. Lo podemos ocupar para planear cosas, para hacer promesas, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, cuando usted le promete algo a un niño, o a su mamá, o a su papá, etc. Warnings para advertencias, ¿verdad? Threats para amenazar, amenazas, o persuading para persuadir a alguien. And here we have examples. Let's see, uh, Rosemary, can you read these sentences, please? Okay. Okay. If I go to Raleigh next week for work, and I'll visit the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. If I have time tomorrow, I will help you. Mm -hmm. If you touch that wire, you will get an electric shock. Very good. Exactly. So the first one is a plan, right? El primero es un plan. If I go to Italy next week for work, I'll visit the Coliseum. El segundo es una promesa. If I had time tomorrow, I will help you, right? I promise I will help you. Y la tercera es una advertencia. If you touch that wire, you will get an electric shock. Si tocas ese cable, te vas a electrificar. We have more right threats and persuading right we have these are all of the conditional aquí están todos los condicionales y sus usos está la zero conditional que ya la estudiamos la first conditional que ya también la repasamos y la que vamos a ver y la que, la que vamos a practicar en esta sección es la second conditional right 
En la second conditional, como pueden ver, aquí están los tiempos que vamos a utilizar. Pero para la second conditional se utiliza past simple, el pasado simple. So, what you have to know about the second conditional is what? The verbs, right? The verbs in past. Regular verbs and irregular verbs. Eso es lo que se tienen que aprender los verbos. Y el would, que ya lo vimos, ¿verdad? El would or el could or el might. Those modal verbs that will help us to create the consequence. So, the, the, the past simple and would plus verb or could or might. Y como ya dijimos, la second conditional se ocupa para eh, situaciones hipotéticas, hypothetical or unlikely situations, unreal or improbable situations, and now or in the future. Y aquí está la tercera condicional, pero eso la van a ver en otro módulo, la van a ver más adelante. Esa se usa para una persona que se imagina cómo hubiera sido el pasado. Una situación imaginaria que, que no pasó, ¿verdad? Si yo hubiera hecho esto, ¿verdad? Si yo no hubiera estado aquí, sí, uh, entonces ya es algo que, que no pasó, pero nos imaginamos cómo hubiera sido el pasado. Esa es la third conditional. Pero por el momento, uh, by the moment, we are going to study the second conditional, ¿ok? The second conditional. Uh, do you have any questions right now? Preguntas. Everything's clear? Everything's clear for me. Okay, very good. Perfect. So we are going to start right now. So we already know um, that when we are talking about a hypothetical or unlikely or impossible situation, we are going to use the second condition, right? If plus past simple. Entonces, si, si, if you have problems with the verbs, si tienen problemas con los verbos, vayan a repasarlos, ¿verdad? That's good. It's always good to have a list of verbs so you can uh, use them and you can practice, right? And also you can uh, study a little bit of the past participles also. And we have the, the second clause here, right? Subject plus would plus verb. Uh, that is the conditional verb is a uh, conditional to the first clause happening or will only happen if the first part clause happens. So, and this will be the, the, the if clause, right? If plus past simple, right? And then will plus verb. And we have examples. Aquí tenemos más ejemplos, ¿verdad? If I won the lottery, I will travel around the world. Si me ganara la lotería, viajaría, ¿verdad? I will travel around the world. So, It's unlikely that I will win the lottery, but uh, hypothetically, I imagine what I what, what what will I do, right, in that situation. Uh, another example: If I knew his name, I will tell you. Si supiera su nombre, te lo diría. Will tell you, right? If I didn't have a headache, I will go to the party. Si no tuviera dolor de cabeza, iría a la fiesta. If I became president. I will reduce the salaries of all politicians. Si me convirtiera en presidente, reduciría los salarios de todos los políticos. So that is unlikely that I will become the president. So that's why um, we use it in that way. It's improbable, right? And um, it says here that we can notice the comma, right? If the if goes at the beginning, we have to write the comma. So let's see here. Oh, this is uh, that we can reverse also. Aquí está uh, al revés, ¿verdad? The conditional está primero, o sea, el would está primero, y el if está después. Y aquí tenemos más ejemplos. I would be happy if I had more free time. Sería feliz si tuviera más tiempo libre. I would tell you the answer if I knew what it was. There would be fewer accidents if everyone drove more carefully. We will have a lot of money if we sold our house. Will she come if I paid for her flight? Will you accept the job if they offer it to you? What would you do if you won the lottery? What would you do if you saw an UFO? So here the comma is not necessary, right? Aquí la coma no es necesaria. 
So uh, let's see if you have understood. Let's see here. Rina, uh, what would you do if you were the president, Rina? What would you do? I will. Well, I. But tell me the complete sentence. If I were the president. Hello, Rina, can you hear me? Sorry, teacher, I was <laughs> mute. Sorry. Yes. Okay, tell me the complete sentence. If I were the president. If I will the president. Mm -hmm. If I will the president. I would. I will uh, tell to the Salvadorians to to don't throw um trash at the streets. Okay. If I were the president, I will tell all the Salvadorians to not throw trash on the streets. Very good. Rina, choose someone else. Let's call alguien más, Rina. Okay. Uh, Maximo? Maximo, are you there, Maximo? Okay, Maximo, what would you do if you won the lottery? If I won the lottery, mm -hmm. I pay my house. Okay, I will pay my house, right? Uh -huh. Okay, if I won the lottery, I will pay my house. Perfect. Maximo, choose someone else. Patricia. Oh, Patricia, are you able to speak right now, Patricia? Or you're still in traffic. Good evening, teacher. Uh, good evening. Okay, I will ask you something in a real situation. What What would you do if you saw a UFO? Yeah, a UFO is like um, como un platillo volador, verdad? Something like that. And and then fit and then fit a flyer object. Yes, an identified flying object, exactly. Um, I I get scared. Oh, okay. I, uh huh. What else? I I get scared with the seed the sound of a O. Mm -hmm. Will you take a picture? A picture? A video? Yes. Yes, right. I don't know, but yes, I take that picture. <laughs> okay, very good. If I saw a UFO, I will be scared. Or if I saw a UFO, I will take a picture or a video. Very good. Perfect. So you see, that is it's fun to, to play with this uh, conditional because we start thinking and imagining what will we do, right? Like superstition. Okay, if I were, if I were, teacher, y por qué no se dice if I was? Si así me enseñaron, verdad? I was, you were, verdad? Si me enseñaron. Y por qué aquí se dice if I were? Quién sabe? Who who knows that? It's polite. It's polite, yeah, probably, yes. Okay. Okay. In this conditional, uh, yes, go ahead. I don't know, but I think because I'm thinking if I'm other person. Yes, exactly. If I were you, right? Si yo fuera tú. In informal English, uh, si se dice if I was, verdad? Pero in formal English, the rule is if I were, right? Si yo fuera. Cuando usamos la condicional, es if I were, verdad? The second conditional. Si yo fuera tú. Uh, estaría contento, estaría feliz, I would be happy, I would be sad, I would be, I don't know. But if I were you, right, I see, if I were you. 
So it says, note that with the verb to be, we use if plus I, he, she, it, where. No solo es con I, verdad, sino que con he también, con she y con it. If he were you, si él fuera tú, o if she were you, si ella fuera tú, no se ocupa el was. The reason we use were instead of was is because the sentence is in subjunctive mode. Es porque está en modo subjuntivo, dice. Y por eso en el modo subjuntivo se conjugan de una manera diferente los verbos. Por eso se usa were. For example, if I were not in debt, I will quit my job. Si no estuviera en deudas, renunciaría a mi trabajo. I will quit my job. If he were taller, he'd be accepted into the team. Si él fuera más alto, él sería aceptado en el equipo. She would still be correcting my grammar if she were still alive. Ella estaría aún corrigiendo, aún estaría corrigiendo mi gramática si estuviera aún viva, ¿verdad? She will still be correcting my grammar if she were still alive. So, in conditionals, like second conditional, we use where, right? It's it's a rule, right? Because it's in subjunctive mood. But as I already told you, in movies, in series, or on the street, right, in the United States, um, you can say, people say, if I was, if I was you, if I was here, if she was here, also, they use it with you if you was, right? If you was, if you was this person, if you was here before, lo usan así, was. Pero eh, it's not, it, that is, this is, that is uh, informal, right? Informal English. Okay, could in second conditional. So, ya sabemos que podemos utilizar would y son haría, ¿verdad? Vuelve en i a los verbos. Pero could también lo podemos utilizar, ¿verdad? For example, if he trained every day, he could represent his country. Si él entrenara todos los días, él podría representar su país. If I had a little more money, I could buy a car. Si tuviera un poquito más de dinero, podría comprar un auto. A la pequeñita la letra y todo para que se quepa. Okay, what would you do? Let's see right now. Again, right, with the... With the with the questions. What would you do, Gabriela, if someone offered to tell you your future? Would you want to know, yes or no? Gabriela no, Marisa? I don't want to know. Why? Because the life is funny because you don't know what happened next. But if you already know, that's not fun. Okay, uh, so you you don't believe like in in tarot or things like that in horoscope things like that. No, I don't really believe in that. Okay, very good, Gabriela. Very good. So she wouldn't like to know that. Very good, perfect, Gabriela. Choose someone else. Let's go, alguien más, Gabriela. Sony. Sonia, okay, Sonia. If there was a holiday in a haunted house available, would you pay money to go there? What is the meaning of how haunted? Haunted house, casa embrujada. Si hubiera una vacación o en un día libre usted tuviera que pasar una vacación, una noche ahí en una casa embrujada, ¿usted pagaría dinero para ir ahí? No. No, <laughs> why? Eh, the horror no, no is for me. The horror is not for you. Okay, you don't no. like ghosts, you don't like supernatural things. No. Okay, so you wouldn't pay any money, zero money. Zero. Zero money. Okay, very good. Perfect. So, yes, because some people, they like those things, right? Like, ah, let's go to a haunted house or ah, let's go to, to the cemetery and, and take pictures, right? And uh, they like to do those, those kind of things, scary things. 
Okay, Sonia, choose someone else. Escoja alguien más, Sonia. Jose Moises. Jose Moises, okay. Jose Moises, if your friend told you that they had seen a ghost, would you believe them? Sorry, can you repeat, teacher? Yes. If your friend told you they had seen a ghost, would you believe them? Yes, I I be, I believe him. Why? Um, because I think the ghosts are real. You believe in ghosts? Have you seen a ghost? Uh, I, I I never seen a ghost, but some uh, I I feel something strange things, <laughs> stranger things here in your uh, house. Sometimes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what what has happened? Like something moving by itself? Yes, yes. Uh, once a time, um, and uh, a glass on the table moved. And what did you do? Uh, I saw that and I feel uh, scared. <laughs> you feel scared and you went to bed yeah. or nothing? Or what you, nothing? You didn't no, do I, I, I was in the dining room and... and and uh, and then a, a glass a glass of water was on the table and and uh, como de repente como suddenly uh -huh. suddenly the the glass moved and did you tell someone in your family le dijo alguien ahí en su familia yes uh, I, I i lived with my parents and and I, I told you to my mother, but I, I don't know that she believed me. <laughs> you don't know if she believed you. Okay. Yeah. But you, you believe in ghosts, so you will believe your friend if they tell you that they, if they told you that they've seen a ghost. Yeah, yes, I think the ghosts are real. Okay, okay. But nothing has happened in your house right now, like nothing serious, right? Uh, now, uh, no. But uh, some sometimes my my sons told me the doors closed. Oh, okay, they they closed. Probably the wind, right? Or not? <laughs> Probably the ghost. No, no, the the, the windows uh, were was were closed. Oh, the windows were closed. Okay. Yeah. Okay, very good. Yeah, probably something happened, right? We don't know. We don't know. Probably go. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, Jose. Can you choose someone else? Uh, Rosemary. Okay, Rosemary. Number four, it says, if you heard strange noises at night, would you believe it was a ghost? Si usted escuchara así ruidos en la noche, ¿pensaría que era un fantasma? ¿O no? You don't believe in ghosts. Um, I don't believe in ghosts. You don't believe in ghosts. Uh, so you have never seen a ghost. You think that that is probably something else. Uh, Okay, nunca ha visto un fantasma, cree que son otras cosas. No, no cree. You don't believe in ghosts. Um, uh, it's not that they made a start, a start in, no sé qué si te, no sé, pero es que nunca tengo un estado, entonces no tengo un miedo así que se diga. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Okay, very good. Very ah. good. No problem. Very good. So, <laughs> if you don't believe, that's okay. 
Let's say uh, Rosemary, choose someone else. Let's go alguien más. Gabriela Marisa. Ah, she already participated. Ya participó Gabriela con la primera. Um, we have Alicia, we have Josemith, we have Rina. Um, Rina. Rina, okay. <laughs> Rina, would you want to come back as a ghost if you could? Yes, I would like to. Yes, okay, why? Mm, because I if I think um the you cannot see the a ghost, right? Mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. just feel feel them or see some things that they move. Mm -hmm. So I will come mm -hmm. and take my revenge. Uh, uh, and I don't know. I will make fun of my of my friends or something. Yes, okay. I would like. Okay, who would you scare? Who would be the first person that that you will scare? Mm, my best friend. Your my best, best friend. friend. Okay, yeah. your best friend. Yeah, that will be fun. Yeah. That will be funny. Yeah, very yes. good, Rina. <laughs> Let's see someone else. Let's go, alguien más que no haya participado. Um, I don't remember uh, who hasn't participated. I think we have Josemith hasn't participated. I guess. Okay, Josemith. Josemith. Okay, Josemith. Would you communicate with the dead if you could? Uh, maybe with who? <laughs> maybe okay yes uh so would you like to communicate with someone yes with my grandma with your grandma but what in, i communicate with her but with a dream so ah. i think so all the time when for example when uh my second uh, son was born mm -hmm. i almost there so I saw her. I don't know why I I saw a a, a big uh, light light a uh, white light in my face. So and I felt like she was there with me, mm -hmm. and she took my my shoulder, and she didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. I feel I feel her. So I think. I believe in that. Okay, so you felt your grandma. Yes. Okay, that very interesting story. That very, happened. Very, yes. It was a miracle because it was very. I I feel uh, chilly when I think about it. <laughs> okay, I I understand. Okay, I understand. No problem. Thank you for your comment, Josmith. Now choose someone else, please. La última persona, anybody, cualquier persona, porque creo que ya todos participaron. Eh, Maximo. Maximo, are you there? I don't. I haven't seen him connected. Yeah, I guess that he disconnected. I don't know if he was the one who wrote it. Creo que él fue el que escribió en el grupo que tenía problemas. Someone else, please. Rina, I think is the only name I know. Okay, Rina. Rina, if you thought your house is haunted, what would you do? Mm. Well, well, I got two options. One, and I don't know, talk to a pastor or a or a religious person to come to my house and pray and make an exorcism mm -hmm. and the second one is make a museum <laughs> and, <laughs> and how can I say uh, like a cover 
for to get in the house and try to make uh yeah like a museum or a party with the girls you know the people like things like that mm -hmm. they pay for to go to Hampton house and I got that two options okay very good so you will call a, a pastor or a priest and do an exorcism or you can make money right out of it yeah. okay yeah. Two options. very good <laughs> two options very good options very good i never thought about that very good perfect so as you can see these are our probabilities right something that we can imagine right so for tomorrow and uh, no, for tomorrow no classes mañana no hay classes um so you can rest right but uh, you can rest no homework for tomorrow and i will see you on monday to finish this topic okay lo vamos a ver hasta el lunes okay okay thank have you. a nice evening and don't be scared of ghosts okay okay thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. bye